The Senator from Iowa. I would ask that the calling of the quorum be suspended. Without objection. And I would ask permission to speak in morning business as if for about 12 or 13 minutes. Without objection. For over a year now, I've been investigating Fast and Furious. That's an operation coming out of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. And around this town, we refer to that bureau as ATF. This has been a very complicated investigation. It has been made even more difficult because of the Justice Department's lack of candor and transparency. Basically, the Justice Department is stonewalling, interfering with Congress's constitutional responsibility of oversight. For example, the Justice Department's Office of Inspector General recently disclosed that it has received 80,000 pages of documents from the department and over 100,000 emails. Now think of what the Inspector General gets from the department, 80,000 pages, 100,000 emails, and how much do you think that they've given Congress of the United States that has the constitutional responsibility of oversight? Only 6,000 pages that we've received. Similarly, the Inspector General has been allowed to conduct 70 witness interviews. How many have we been, has the Justice Department allowed us in the Congress and our constitutional responsibility of oversight to interview? Only nine witnesses compared to the 70 witnesses. Last week, Attorney General Eric Holder testified before the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. The Justice Department did a document dump to Congress the Friday night before the hearing. That has become a very bad habit of the Department of Justice. In fact, with, without giving us any advance notice that it was coming, they actually put a CD under the door of our office after business hours. And what they did for the press department, they gave the same documents to the press people two hours before they ever gave them to us. Yes, they managed to find time to leak the documents to the press during regular business hours. This is the kind of cooperation that we get from the Justice Department in our President, constitutional responsibility the majority leader. of oversight. Madam President, could I, through the chair, ask my friend to yield for a unanimous consent request regarding schedule here in the Senate? I guess uh, if I want to get along with the majority leader, I better yield, so I'll no, yield. I, I would say, Madam President, my friend from Iowa would get along even if he didn't agree. Will I have the floor when you get done? Yes, and I would ask that his statement not appear interrupted in the record. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent that today, February 9th at 1.30, the Senate proceed to executive session to consider calendar number 407, that there be 30 minutes divided in the usual form, that upon the use or yielding back of the time, the Senate proceed to vote with no intervening action or debate on calendar number 407. Motion we consider be considered made and laid on the table. There be no intervening action or debate, and no further motion be in order. Any state statements related to this matter be printed in the record, and President Obama be immediately notified of the Senate's action, and the Senate proceed then to legislative session and the cloture vote on the motion to proceed to S1813 under the previous order. Is there objection? No objection, so ordered. The Senator from Iowa. If uh, the Senator from Nevada didn't do this, I want to ask requests that his uh, speech not interrupt uh, my, the context of my speech. So I've been I, al I already did that. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so what I'm telling my colleagues here is that we just have terrible lack of cooperation from the Justice Department. The Justice Department is not only thumbing its nose at a few members of the Senate, they're doing it to the entire Congress of the United States. When we know there's 80,000 pages of documents, 
and they only give us 6,000 pages. When there's 100,000 emails, and we get a handful of emails. And then why, why would they be so mysterious, wanting to put a disc under our door on a Friday night, and give it to the press two hours before? What sort of attitude is that of our Justice Department towards the cooperation that you ought to have with our filling our constitutional role of oversight? So I guess I'd say it hardly any cooperation whatsoever that we get from the Justice Department. Now, even though we get a dribble here and a dribble there, even though we get a CD under the door instead of very openly face-to-face -face receiving documents, what we got last Friday did reveal further facts about a previously unknown proposal to allow these guns to cross the border. Now, for somebody wondering about guns crossing the border, what are we talking about? We're talking about Fast and Furious, a program of the Justice Department, a program that tells licensed gun dealers, we want you to sell guns illegally, and 2,000 were sold illegally so we can follow them across the border and maybe arrest some drug kingpin. But we never get there. So, that's what we're investigating. We, uh, now I said that we did reveal some facts previously unknown. We have long known that in March 2011, Deputy Attorney General James Cole had a conference call with all Southwest border U.S. agents. In a follow-up email after the call, Mr. Cole wrote, quote, as I said on the call, to avoid any potential confusion, I want to reiterate the department's policy. We should not design or conduct undercover operations which include guns crossing the border. If we have knowledge that guns are about to cross the border, we must take immediate action to stop the firearms from crossing the border, even if that prematurely terminates or otherwise jeopardizes an investigation, end of quote. Now, Attorney General Holder himself told us in a hearing in May that Mr. Cole was simply reiterating an existing justice uh, policy in his emails, not communicating new policy. So imagine my surprise when I discovered in the document slid under my door late last Friday that while in Mexico, Assistant Attorney General Lanny Brewer propose letting guns cross the border. Mr. Brewer's proposal came at exactly the same time the department was preparing to send its letter to me denying that the ATF ever does the very thing that he was proposing. In February 4th, 2012 email, the Justice Department attache in Mexico City wrote to a number of officials at the Justice Department, quote, Assistant Attorney General Brewer proposed allowing straw purchasers to cross into Mexico so the Secretary of Public Safety can attest and the Attorney General of Mexico can prosecute and convict such coordinated operations between the U.S. and Mexico may send a strong message to arms traffickers, end of quote. So we got people here in Washington say the program doesn't exist. At the same time, we got people talking down in Mexico City of what we're trying to accomplish by the illegal sale of guns. Now, that email I just quoted, the recipient of it included Mr. Brewer's deputy, Jason Weinstein, who was helping to write the Justice Department letter to me that they would later withdraw for its inaccuracies. In other words, they wrote a letter to me February 4th last year that in October they admitted that they had misled us. Mr. Weinstein was sending updates about the draft letter to Mr. Brewer in Mexico at this very same time, so he can't say he didn't know about it. Yet during his testimony to the Senate Judiciary Committee, Mr. Brewer downplayed his involvement in reviewing the draft letter. So it is outrageous to me that the head of the Justice Department's criminal division 
proposed exactly what his department was denying to me was actually happening. The Justice Department's letter to me clearly said, quote, ATF makes every effort to interdict weapons that have been purchased illegally and prevent their transfers, transportation to Mexico, end of quote. They said that at the very same time that they were having emails that said that this program existed. Yet those words were being sent to Congress. Mr. Ruhr was advocating that the Justice Department operation allow weapons to be transported into Mexico. Further, it directly contradicted what the Justice Department has said its policy was. So, is it possible that they can have it both ways? No, you can't have it both ways. If they didn't have a policy against such operations, perhaps it's not a surprise that an operation like Fast and Furious sprang up if the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. After all, as that, as that same Justice Department attache wrote of a meeting a few days after his first email, quote, I raise the issue that there is an inherent risk in allowing weapons to pass from U.S. to Mexico, the possibility of the government of Mexico not seizing the weapons and the weapons being used to commit crimes in Mexico. Well, the light bulb went on. If you're selling guns illegally, 2,000 of them, they don't interdict them? Well, yeah. There's, they end up murdering hundreds of people in Mexico and one person in the United States at least. So, if they didn't have a policy against such operations, how come the Justice Department did have a policy against such operations? This is a record of Mr. Brewer proposing to violate it. That's not just my conclusion. That's the Attorney General's conclusion as well. At last week's hearing in the House of Representatives, the Attorney General was asked to explain the contradiction between his deputy's anti-gun walking policy and the evidence of Mr. Brewer proposed operation to let guns cross the border. He couldn't answer that question. But the Attorney General answered, quote, well, clearly what was proposed in, I guess, February by Lanny Brewer was in contravention of the policy that I had the Deputy Attorney General make clear to everybody at Maine Justice and to the field, end of quote. Perhaps this disconnect between Justice Department policy and Lanny Brewer's proposal explains Mr. Brewer's previous inaction to stop gun walking. When he found out about gun walking and op Operation Wide Receiver in April 2010, he failed to do anything to stop it or to hold anyone accountable. He simply had his deputy inform ATF leadership. Regardless, Mr. Brewer's contravention of Justice Department policy is yet another reason why it is long past time for Mr. Brewer to leave the Department of Justice. Mr. Brewer's misled Congress about whether he was aware of the Department's false letter to me. To this day, he is still the highest ranking official in any administration that we know was aware of gun walking in any federal program. Yet he took no action to stop gun walking. He failed to alert the Attorney General or the Inspector General. If Mr. Brewer has failed the Justice Department, he's failed the American people. This failure raises some important questions. Why did Attorney General Holder determine that Mr. Brewer was proposing allowing straw purchasers to reach Mexico with traffic we trafficked weapons? What has he done about it? Will Mr. Brewer be held accountable for hatching a plan to directly violate the Attorney General's anti-gun walking policy? The Attorney General clearly testified that the proposal was in contravention of that policy. How does the Justice Department know other senior criminal division officials weren't proposing operations similar to Fast and Furious? These are just a subset of some of the major questions remaining in our investigation of Fast and Furious. It has now been one year since the Department sent me its false letter. Uh, how did the Justice Department move from its position of dismissing the complaints of whistleblowers to acknowledging that now those whistleblower complaints are true? What officials were internally dismissive of whistleblower complaints and who believed that they could have merit sh and should be taken seriously? To what extent 
did Justice Department officials seek to retaliate against whistleblowers? Exactly how and when did the Justice Department officials begin to learn the truth of what happened? Former ATF Director Ken Melson has testified how and when he learned that guns had walked. What about Attorney General Holder? What about Assistant Attorney General Lanny Brewer? A year after Operation Fast and Furious concluded, who will be held accountable? Why didn't top justice officials uh, see the clear connection between Fast and Furious and previously flawed operations that they have admitted that they knew, knew about? How has the Justice Department assessed the mistakes and culpability of these officials? It is time now, finally, for the Justice Department to stop stonewalling and start providing answers. It's time for Holder to share with Congress the other 74,000 pages of documents that they've turned over to the Inspector General. It's time for Holder to give us access to the dozens of other people the Inspector General has been allowed to interview. In short, it's time for Holder to come clean with the American people. The sooner he does it and the Department does it, the sooner we can get to the bottom of what really happened. And particularly the Terry family deserves to know what gun killed their son, because it was probably one of these guns.